Today, we're cracking open a glossy topic, something that makes wood furniture glow, protects paintings, and gives musical instruments their polished charm. Yes, we're talking about varnish, that clear, shiny coat that seems to lock beauty in place. But what exactly is varnish, and how is it made? You've seen it in action, whether on hardwood floors, boats, or antique furniture but very few people ever stop to think about what it's made of or where it comes from. So today, let's take a deep dive into the shiny world of varnish, from sticky resins and solvents to the final glass-like layer on your grandma's coffee table, right here on History of Simple Things. Before we dive into the ingredients, we need to clarify what varnish actually is. In the simplest terms, varnish is a transparent or semi-transparent finish that's applied to surfaces, mostly wood, to protect them and enhance their appearance. Unlike paint, which adds color and hides the surface beneath, varnish lets the natural grain show through. It doesn't just sit on top of the wood, it seeps in a little bonding to the fibers and forming a protective shell. But here's where it gets interesting. Varnish isn't a single substance. It's a blend of multiple components that each serve a specific purpose. And depending on what those components are, you can get everything from a tough, weather-resistant marine varnish to a delicate lacquer used on violin wood. So what goes into making varnish? At its core, traditional varnish is made from three basic ingredients, a resin, a drying oil, and a solvent. Think of it as a recipe. The resin is the body. It gives varnish its hard, glassy finish. Historically, resins came from natural sources like tree sap, most famously amber, copal, or rosin from pine trees. These resins were heated and melted into the oil to form a thick syrup. Nowadays, synthetic resins like alkyd, polyurethane, or acrylic are often used because they're cheaper, more consistent, and more customizable. Next comes the drying oil, which acts like the glue that binds the resin to the surface. Linseed oil is the classic choice and is still widely used. When exposed to air, linseed oil polymerizes, it transforms from a liquid into a solid, helping the varnish harden over time. Other oils like tongue oil or walnut oil can also be used, each offering a slightly different finish and drying time. Lastly, you have the solvent, which thins the mixture so it can be brushed or sprayed on smoothly. Solvents evaporate as the varnish dries, leaving behind the oil and resin to do their magic. Turpentine and mineral spirits are common traditional solvents, though modern formulas may use synthetic alternatives with lower toxicity and odor. Making varnish is not just mixing everything together like a salad dressing, it's more like cooking a stew, and it needs just the right amount of heat and timing. The process starts by heating the resin and oil together in a large metal kettle. This part requires extreme care. Heat it too quickly or too much, and the whole thing can scorch or catch fire. When the resin melts into the oil, the two begin to combine into a uniform mixture, forming what's called a varnish resonate. Once the mixture reaches the desired viscosity and color, the solvent is slowly added, often after the kettle has cooled down a bit. Solvent is flammable so this step has to be done carefully to avoid any explosions. After it's fully blended, the mixture is strained to remove any impurities and stored in airtight containers. It needs to remain sealed until it's used because the solvent starts evaporating as soon as it hits the air. There's a clear distinction between natural varnishes and modern synthetic ones. Traditional varnish, like those used by luthiers or restorers, is made using natural resins and oils and usually takes a long time to dry. These varnishes can give a rich, warm finish that ages beautifully. 
but they can also be finicky to apply and aren't very resistant to moisture or UV exposure. Synthetic varnishes, on the other hand, are designed for durability and speed. They dry faster, resist yellowing, and are far more resilient to water and sunlight. Polyurethane varnish, for example, is a staple in home improvement projects because it forms a hard plastic-like surface that can take a beating. Water-based varnishes are another modern option, made with acrylic resins and water instead of oils and strong solvents. They're safer to use, especially indoors, and they dry quicker, but they don't always offer the same depth and glow that oil-based varnishes do. Once varnish is made, it's not quite ready to do its job until it's carefully applied. Applying varnish is an art in itself. You can brush it, spray it, or even wipe it on with a cloth, depending on the surface and the type of varnish. The key is to apply it in thin, even coats. Too thick, and it'll bubble or crack as it dries. Too thin, and it won't offer enough protection. Drying is a chemical process, not just physical evaporation. The oil and resin need time to oxidize and polymerize to form long molecular chains that lock everything into place. That's why varnish takes hours, sometimes even days, to fully cure. Depending on the type, you might need to sand lightly between coats to ensure adhesion and smoothness. A properly varnished surface can have a mirror-like finish but it takes patience and care to get there. So the next time you run your hand across a beautifully polished table or admire the shine on a wooden floor, remember, it's not just shine for show. Varnish is a carefully balanced blend of chemistry and craftsmanship. It starts with humble resins and oils, cooked and mixed with precision, and ends as a thin, invisible shield that preserves, protects, and enhances whatever it touches. Whether it's an ancient painting, a wooden ship, or a DIY home project, varnish plays a quiet but essential role in preserving beauty for generations. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below we'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.